Hey, all oh, soup eaters. The door fighting door movie has just been released very recently. But even though at this age, at 16 years old, I am still what I still want to, to go to see the movie. But what I'm talking about today is not how awesome Finding Dory is, but you should go watch it by the way. But what I'm talking about today is memory, or more especially, amnesia, or memory loss, which is the condition that Dory is having. So stick around and let's find out. Many fish possesses some of the very good brain in the animal kingdom. But do you know whose brain is more efficient than fishes? Our brain. Human's brain. Our human brains can be divided into different functions for memory. But then we can say one of the two most crucial part. One of them is long term memory and another is short term memory just like computers. In computers, we have the place where you can store the information, but there are also two types of place you can store the information in. First, there is the place where you can store the files and information for a very long term period, which is stored in this storage drive. It stores all of the information, including all of your files, as well as your operating systems like Macs or Windows, and also there is a random access memory like one of these that is commonly known as RAM. It is a working memory. But what is the difference between the RAM and the storage by the way? And how do we compare them to our brain? With the same analogy, human brain also has these kinds of memory too. So first there is a long term memory which works like the storage. It stores the information in long-term period, like your birth date, your parents' name, your own name, your girlfriend's name, what Adam looks like, um, anything, almost anything, or even what science and soup look like, which looks like this, this, this. These types of memory is stored in the region of the brain called cerebral cortex, which is the outermost region of the biggest part of the brain called cerebrum. In the same way as the RAM or random access memory, human's brain also has the working memory too. It stores the information that you are remembering at the moment, such as where you where you are going at the moment, or what is the plate number of the car that just hit you, or even what is behind the cards in the card game that is flipped down that you are seeing in this moment. The short-term memory is stored in the region of the brain called the hippocampus, which is about right there. The long-term memory, like the cerebral cortex and the storages that we use in computers, work like a closet that can store huge amounts of clothes and items, but each item is stored in a particular shelf. The same things happen for memory too. The information in the storage drive is stored in a particular place in the drive and the human's long-term memories are stored throughout the entire cerebral cortex. This means this method, even though can store huge amounts of items and can do so well managedly, it took time for the computers to run through huge amounts of memory to locate the data which is the same way as we taking time to chunk up different bits of memory throughout the brain to restore our long-term memory each time we want to recall them. Which is also comparable to the way that we take time to find our favorite clothes in the closet, which also takes a lot of time. 
considering that our brain can store petabytes of data and that the storage in the computer can store up to hundreds of gigabytes of data, if not terabytes of data, which is why both in the computers and in our brains, the long-term memory is a very time-consuming process. With this amount of memory, good luck dealing with that long-term memory. The short-term memory, like the random access memory known as RAM in computers and the hippocampus in our brain, works like pieces of paper being laid on a flat table which can be picked up at any moment which is easier both in computers and in humans because memory can be picked up at any time from any random places and from any random order hence the name random access memory one drawback of this type of memory even though it is easier and faster to recall the memory is that it is like working on a small flat table even though we can locate the paper very easily, it can store very little amounts of them, like that the short-term memory have very little capacity in comparison to the long-term memory both in humans and in computers. But how much or how little can your short-term memory remember? It may be less than you think. Don't believe me? Let's find out if you are Dory or not. And if you are, can you enhance your memory? I have a game for you. On this screen, there will be a set of numbers randomly generated and we will only show you for just 10 seconds. You have to remember them as many as possible. The number will show up in 3, 2, 1, go! Are you done? How many have you remembered so far? If you think it did little, maybe there is nothing wrong about it after all. Most of us can remember just only 7 items at a time, depending on what types of information we are trying to remember. And it is true for every single one of us. Now guys, I will change something up. Let's try this. You have 20 seconds to remember. Type your answer in the comments section, but don't publish or you will spoil the answer for other people that are watching after you. Are you ready? Go! Pause the video if you didn't already. Here is the answer. How well did you do? Are you not doing well again? Well, let's change something up and see how well you do. You will have 10 seconds for this. After this, you may need to pause the video and put the answer down in the comment section below so you don't cheat. But just don't post or you will spoil the answer for other people that are watching after you. Are you ready? It will start in 3, 2, 1, go! How did you do? Better? Almost all of them or even all of them. How can you suddenly change from being just a walking version of Dory to being just a human in a sudden? But I think you are not alone. People are better at remembering something that is meaningful, something that is useful to them. This is why people can't remember random text or random chunks of numbers, but can remember phone numbers that are as nonsense except that it is divided into different chunks like 334. So this is why people can remember 123, 
4567890 in the phone number. Better than they can remember 1234567890 for example. Since one of them is divided into meaningful chunks and others is just random full text or random strings of numbers. I will just have another trick for you. You will also have 20 seconds. The same rules apply. Put it in the comment section below, pause if you need to, and don't post the comment that you are typing in or you will spoil the answer for other people. Just the same rule. The time will start in 3, 2, 1, go! Did you just remember if not most or all of them? And also, many of you notice that these pictures are so familiar. The reason why it is so familiar? It is because it is the same one as last time. I just shuffle it a little bit. Well, it's not strange. It is what is called Picture Superiority Effect. It stands for the phenomenon that people are better at remembering pictures rather than words or text. And there are a few explanations out there. These are the few. First, the one proposed by Pavio, the dual coding theory. This theory said that pictures are encoded better than words. To put it more simply, look at this diagram. Words like this word B can only encode the verbal code or itself, but not the image code because there are no visual representation in the word B. So at the end, words can only encode once. For pictures, it is a different story. The pictures like this picture of the B can encode the verbal code, or in this case, the word B, because in the real world, many of the pictures can also be referred by names, which is in words. In addition to this, the pictures can also encode the image code or the visual representation of it, resulting in the total of two encoding for the picture stimuli. Because words are only encoded once while pictures are encoded twice. So we can easily conclude that our brain can remember pictures more easily than words because there are more encoding going on for the pictures than for words. Second theory that is proposed by Nelson, the sensory semantic theory. In this theory, it said that pictures are more distinct from each other than words do. To give you a sense of a real life situation, let's say I tell you to find the picture of a balloon and the word balloon from this chunk of shuffle pictures and words. I bet you are more likely to find the pictures of the balloon more easily than you can find the word balloon. Besides this, it is also believed that pictures access meaning more directly than words. With these two things together, we can easily conclude that pictures are much more easier for our brain to recall than words. The third theory, lastly, proposed by Weldon and Rodinger, it is the theory called the Transfer Appropriate Processing Theory. This theory is different from the first two. Rather than explaining why we remember pictures better than words, 
It rather said that to determine how well we can remember something, we need to refer to the relation of the encoding to the retrieval of the memory. Basically, this means the types of information doesn't play much role in the efficiency of the memory. What that matters is how related the information being recalled is to how the information is being presented to our brain in the first place. For example, if the information refers to the meaning, people are more likely to refer to the concepts of the memory better than its perceptual features. Like for this icon of the camera, it refers to the concept of photography than to the object camera. So if I flip this down, a day later I can ask you and you can still easily remember what it is, the taking photo icon on your phone. But if I ask about the perceptual features, like if the camera has a flash on it or not, you wouldn't be able to certainly tell me, can you? So if you think that you don't have a very good memory, just make it more visual. It could have helped in some ways. Since everyone here seems to know that our brain, specifically our short-term memory, can remember just only seven things at a time. How little should our short-term memory remember that we can be considered amnesia patients? or more specifically, people that suffer from short-term memory loss, like Dory. To make it more simpler, since many animals in the Pixar universe seem to have intelligence Are you saying I'm stupid? Yes! <laughs> and can communicate through speech, let's say that Dory has brains similar to that of humans, and her brain is also very large in comparison to the body just like us. This means we can also assume that she has short-term and long-term memory like us and that the memory needs to pass through short-term memory before being stored in the long-term memory. Since she has the brain similar to that of ours, we can also say that her condition can also be found in humans too. As for humans, there are many types of memory loss. Let's say we refer to the two main ones because I don't think you are going to tolerate listening to all of them, right? Okay, so the two main ones are anterograde and the retrograde amnesia. The retrograde amnesia refers to the patient that the short-term memory functions properly but however the cerebral cortex responsible for long-term memory got defected this means the person can still have a superb short-term memory but have very bad to no long-term memory at all since the place that stores the information for the long-term got defective. In contrast, for an anterograde amnesia, the patient's hippocampus responsible for short-term memory is not functioning properly and since the short-term memory is the first gate Quote, quote, of the memory, we can say that her long-term memory is going to be decreased as well. However, they may still be able to remember and recall the long-term memory that had happened before the hippocampus started dysfunctioning. So what does Dory have? I suffer from short-term memory loss. It runs in my family. It may seem obvious that she only has short-term memory loss or anterograde amnesia. That is so sad, you boy. But we can't cut short like that. The memories that are stored in the process described before are called declarative memory or knowing what that includes all the memories that we are consciously aware of, like names. The difference between bicycle and a car or how people look like. These types of memory can't be formed without the hippocampus. But since she seems to still be able to remember new things, we can say that her short-term memory is not functioning properly, to say the least. But it is still working, as seen from the fact that she can still make new long-term memory, like getting to know Marlin and remembering that he is her best friend, which, if she has severe short-term memory loss, 
she could only remember Marlin's name, but didn't quite know how she knew him in the first place. But if this is the case, then she just have only minor short-term memory loss, right? No. Oh, I'm, okay. Sorry, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Well, there's one more problem with that. If her short-term memory is only affected, she sure will have sh some short-term memory loss issue and some issues with creating new memories. Meaning, even though it is hard for her to remember something in the first time, since her hippocampus, which is the first gate of the memory, got defected. But once she has remembered something, she should have been able to remember for a very long time. Assuming that if her long-term memory is still intact. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. From the movie, you can see that Dory already remembered her family when she was young. But by the time she was a teenager, she already forgot who her parents are. Which the only way that is possible is that she must have some form of long-term memory loss or retrograde amnesia too. But she didn't quite realize she had it. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It runs in my family. At least I think it does. She also lost some of her long-term memory as time passed, but she didn't know it. Well, but did she lose all her memory about her home? Well, maybe not. According to the video made by Ted Ed about HM, whose hippocampus is removed, HM doesn't lose ability to learn, but is unable to consciously learn. What I mean is that he can still acquire new skills, but having no memories of how he acquired them in the first place. These skills that he can learn is another type of memory called procedural memory, or knowing how, like how to play music, instrument, or how to ride a bike, or how to speak, or for Dory, how to swim. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. This type of memory isn't affected by the short-term memory loss since it is processed and stored in many parts of the cerebral cortex and cerebellum the part that is located at the back of the brain without the hippocampus playing a role in it. This kind of memory is acquired through repetition, which is why Dory can remember that she has short-term memory loss by saying it to herself many and many times. Yeah, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Short-term memory loss. Even though she already forgot to hurt her, she has it in the first place. That's exactly what you say. Which also explains why she can remember her way back to her home that she remembered from when she was living there during her childhood. That during the time she saw the place all the time that it becomes her repetitive memory or procedural memory. We will never forget you, Dory. What if I forget you? I miss them. And secretly lead her to where she was from even though she is not aware of it. Then we better get going! So in conclusion, Dory has a minor anterograde amnesia or short-term memory loss and rather more severe long-term memory loss or retrograde amnesia is still fully capable of remembering procedural memory. After watching this video, you may think you have amnesia, or specifically memory loss, can be short term, long term, or maybe you don't think you have any of these conditions at all. But no matter what you are, maybe you may have short term memory loss, long term memory loss, or whatever type of memory loss, or maybe if you don't have any conditions at all. One thing you need to consider is that anyone can be good to one another. Just like Dory, even though she is mentally ill, she has a problem in her brains, she still went on to find Nemo in Finding Nemo. She can be a hero, just as Super Colin's brother said, that she can also be one of the Disney princes. If she, the mentally ill fish, can be a hero, can be a Disney princess, 
Why can't you? Ellen DeGeneres, the person who voiced Dory in Finding Dory and Finding Nemo, said herself that be kind to one another. Maybe this can be a good reason that you can be kind to one another, to be a hero even if you yourself needs help, you may help others. And just like Ellen said, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and come back later to watch more of science. And we will scoop into more science and serve you the knowledge spoon by spoon. And this has been Science in Soup. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. I have a question at the end of the video. Many people missed that last time. So don't forget to check it out. Oh, if you think I have a very good memory, just wait. I will let you see the blooper. I am not very good at memory. I mean, I think I'm good at, at remembering something, but not 100% good, like totally superb, like can remember like computers. No, I have mistakes. I still make mistakes. So if you want to see that, just stick around. Most of us can remember just only seven items at a time, depending on what types of information we are trying to remember. And it is true for every single one of us. What I'm talking about today is Dory and what she is suffering. She has amnesia or charter memory or cut for the important information that needs to be remembered in long term period, such as your birth date, your family name, your mother's name, your mother's birthday, your girl's friend name, what you did yesterday, what you just ate or that you are so cut these types of memory is stored in the hippocampus cut it's the same with the computer the long-term memory cut since six, oh, since, five, take one. since five take two action uh, cut scene five take three action the short-term memory is stored in the region of the brain called the hippocampus, which is about right there. With the same analogy, human brains are stored in two different parts of the brain too. Oh, I know. Oh, my, oh, my. Why did I do that?